So I will continue with the uh, with this videos. Um, so the the other video ended quite unexpectedly because I still, like I said, I still haven't figured all this out. But as you can see, the 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 painting has progressed a little bit more detail, and uh, you know, trying to correct some drawing issues here, trying to make everything more <clears throat> in proportion to how everything looks. Uh, with this technique, with the imprimatura rub out technique, you know, rubbing out the paint, it's always better to use. Uh, a stiff brush like what I have here and uh, you know with some paint thinner erase and uh, in a little bit I think I have to go in and darken some areas uh, this stage is it's a lot of fun here erasing and redrawing and lifting highlights like I'm doing here uh, and like I mentioned, you can carry this to a, a degree of finish where it'll look very nice just in this technique, in this uh, stage. Mm. But it's, uh, it's a preliminary stage for the paintings After this, I'll start adding color. It'll be a, it'll be a limited color. I'll use uh, an earth palette. Again, this is for my painting students, but primarily for my painting one students. And we're st we st we left off the semester as we were uh, using the earth palette. Also. It also has a, a morbid name to it. It's also called the dead palette because the color is very muted. And uh, in the videos I will follow these videos, uh, I'll start to put color. Uh, so, you know, just very carefully trying to make this drawing more accurate you know slight you know slowly erasing i did my brush here into my this is just paint thinner and uh you know i scrub away as you can see that the, there's a lot of emphasis on on uh, light and shadow yeah. and as i progress to make this Probably just work on this maybe another 20 minutes with this kind of a approach. Really looking for the shapes that the shadows make, you know, the shadow shapes. You know, looking for those shadow shapes. Uh, see, like here I'm cutting into the shape. Of the cast shadow these are you know very fundamental you know concepts in painting just uh, helping a student that is getting used to oil paint become more confident you know just dealing with you know basic uh, basic concepts about painting You know, light, shadow, uh, the turning of the form towards the light or away from the light. You know, uh, as a, that's what these uh, painting assignments deal with. You know, this uh, this still life uh, assignment. And of course, I work on this, trying to 
continuously uh, keep uh, improving the drawing I have to make this this pair a little smaller uh, and there's there's only so much you can do also with a stiff brush eventually I'll go in here with the with a soft hair brush to uh, bring out a little bit of details but overall I'm this is pretty close to being complete for this stage. I'm trying to establish the light, the light, and then uh, with a with a softer brush, I'll indicate the shadows. Uh, it's not just a technique of uh, erasing. You can go back in and. Uh, add more values, you know, add darker values to this. You see here the one basic thing that I mentioned to my drawing one and drawing two classes is uh, the edge, you know, edges are very important, and especially the edges on uh, you know, cast shadows, cast shadows, you know, the shadow here that's being cast by the objects. It is sharper when it's closer to the object, like around this area here. And then as it gets farther away, it gets a little bit more blurry. Make the high level brighter here. Get some more paint thinner. So I get the paint thinner and then I take some of it off on my on my rag here. I'm over I'm happy with how this this is going this composition uh, but I've always uh, I've liked the way that oranges uh, look especially after you peel them and you look at the inside of the of the orange some very interesting colors and textures and uh, I might add another orange I'm liking this area maybe I'll peel an orange and add some, you know, some pieces of orange here later on. Checking on the time here of this this video. Time flies when you're when you're painting. It's just already eight minutes. There's a lot of videos that are edited, and in a matter of minutes, you have this nice little painting completed. Uh, but paintings take a I mean they take a while to complete. They don't happen in a few minutes. So we'll leave it. We'll leave it like this for right now. I'm gonna get a a soft hair brush and just kind of soften all of these uh, brush strokes. Make it less uh, scratchy.
one thing that <clears throat> I'd like to emphasize to the students is uh, the shadows, you want to keep them rather flat with minimal detail and put most of the attention on the light, on the light mass. See, light mass, shadow mass here. So now, see this brush, uh, the soft hair brush, blends very nicely. Its brush strokes are less distinct than the bristle brush. Uh, oftentimes students ask me, "What's how come there's uh, different uh, hairs or different bristles for brushes? And well, the harder, stiffer bristles are so that you can start your paintings and because the canvas has no paint on it, it's sometimes a struggle to move the paint around on a on a on a raw canvas. So at first, you want to use those stiffer uh, bristle brushes, and then after you have a layer of paint on your on your canvas, you can go in with. Uh, You can go in with a soft hairbrush. So stiff brushes are so that you can start your paintings. And then soft hair brushes is so that you can finish them. Uh, but of course you can always finish. You can stick with a stiff hair brush with a bristle brush from start to finish if that's what you if that's what you like. So I'm pretty happy here with how this is turning out. Uh, I'm gonna add the darker values of the of the romber, and then I will let it dry for a little bit, and maybe I'll start with color. I'll take a look at this and take a look at the videos. Here it is, a little bit of the. darker accent. I might have put too much paint thinner there. It got a little too watery. I don't know if my hand is going to block the video. This is the challenge here with the video of, of uh, I don't have the painting quite in front of me. I'm seeing it at an angle so that I could fit the uh, the phone so that the phone could record this so that makes it a little challenging eventually I think I'll become a better cameraman here So again, if, if the video just stops, it's because uh, that's as much as I can, as video I can take with the iPhone.
the uh, little stem here on this pear. On this other one, I'll have to erase it for some paint thinner. Just indicate the the turning at the darkest part of the shadow here, and also the turning here on the orange. Creates a nice pattern here. This, this, this. You have to look for those things in a painting, those repetitive patterns that unify a painting. Like I said, this, this can go on for a long time. I believe this is getting to a point where I can add some color. I do have to let it dry for an hour or so. so you know, it's raw umber and those earth colors dry very quickly. And so maybe in an hour, I can start to add some color to it. Again, it's not gonna be the high chroma of the cadmium colors. It'll be an earth palette. Taking a look here. stop the video there and before I stop it I'm gonna show you a little bit of the uh, the, the still life there that I'm working on <laughs> 